Welcome to Pwn College. In this video, I'm going to be showing how the Dojo Pwn College platform can be utilized for solving challenges, submitting flags, and learning cybersecurity. So in order to get started, we need to click on this register button in order to create a new user. So if we click on this, we're going to see what the ground rules are for Pwn College. And then we're going to be presented with options for specifying a username that's public to the world, an email that's private, as well as our password. So in this case, I'm going to create the account welcome video or actually let's call it getting started. And then I will create getting started at example.com. And then we will come up with some sort of password. Okay, and now that it's submitted, we can see all of the available dojos. So in this case, we can see our public dojos, private dojos, as well as archived dojos. In this case, we're gonna be looking at the white belt public dojo. If we click on this White Belt Public Dojo, we'll be presented with all of the modules available for this, as well as some stats and grading information, ranking information, as well as some details about the uh, dojo. So in this case, we're going to be taking a look at the Program Misuse Dojo module. So if I click on the Program Misuse Dojo module, we will see information about this module. The critical information to pay attention to is the lectures and reading, as well as the challenges. So the core concept of Pwn College is that you will be able to see several lecture videos on the relevant concepts for a module, um, get familiar with those concepts through YouTube videos as well as uh, slideshows, and then practice those concepts in the challenges. So in this case, we're going to take a look at Baby Suid Level 1. So the way that Baby Suid Level 1 can be started, as well as any other challenge can be started, is by clicking on this Start button. After a few seconds, we're going to be presented with a prompt telling us that the challenge has successfully started, so we can see that it's shown up. And then we can access the challenge in a few ways. So the first way we're going to be showing how we can access the challenge is through the Workspace tab. So we click on this Workspace tab, we're going to be presented with VS Code running in the browser. So in this case, all we need to solve challenges is a browser. So I'm going to press F1, which presents us with the command, command palette within uh, VS Code, and we're going to hit enter to create a new terminal, uh, because that seems to be what is already up. If it was not already up, we could just type terminal, create new terminal, and we're going to see that pop up. Okay, so now we can see a terminal, and in this case, actually, real quick, I'm going to change the color theme. So there's lots of options within VS Code for customizing it to how you like things to look. In this case, we're going to put it into dark mode. And we are going to now have a terminal accessing the challenge. So the critical thing to know about all of the Pwn College challenges is that they have a flag file. So this flag file is what we're trying to capture. We're trying to capture the flag in order to prove to the system that we have solved the challenge. So unfortunately, we can't just run cat slash flag and get the flag just straight away. Uh, what we're going to need to do instead is utilize the challenge because as we can see, this flag file is owned by the root user and is only readable by the root user. However, who am I? I'm the hacker user, so I do not have access to read this flag file. Fortunately, we have a challenge directory, and within this challenge directory is a several programs, or in this case, uh, the single program, that when run will execute as the root user. And it's gonna be critical to watch those lecture videos to understand really how how these challenges are designed, how it is that we can create a program that when run, runs as the root user, what it means to have a program have the set UID bit set, etc. If you don't understand those concepts, it's because you haven't watched the lecture videos yet, and it's absolutely critical that you do watch those in order to understand what's going on. But in this case, we're just getting started with how to utilize the Dojo platform, and so we're going to ignore that for now. So in the case of this challenge, we can see what an introductory level looks like. So if we run this program, we can see that it set the suid bit on user bin cat, which is basically the same thing going on here that allows the challenge to run as root. Now the cat program is going to run as root, which means we can now use the cat program to read out the flag. In this case, this is just a warp, quick warm up challenge that makes sure that you understand kind of the very basics of utilizing the platform. So if we run cat slash flag now, we are going to be presented with the flag. This is the goal of every challenge. We want to see a flag file or flag data that looks exactly like this. When we have acquired this, we have solved the challenge. So now what we're going to do is we're going to copy that and jump back into the modules. 
and then jump back to the uh, program misuse module. And we're going to look at level one and we're going to submit that flag. So upon submitting it, it tells us that we are correct. And now we have solved the challenge. Okay. So that is the first way that we can access the challenge is through VS Code in the browser. And there's plenty of resources out there that explain how you can customize VS Code, how you can better utilize VS Code. We're not going to jump into that. Just know that VS Code is a popular option for accessing the challenges straight from your browser. The other option is this desktop tab. Within this desktop tab, we're going to have a desktop running straight in the browser as well. So again, this is another way that we can access challenges straight from the browser. Uh, in this case, I'm going to launch up a terminal and we're going to see that we're accessing the exact same environment. So if I look at the flag, right, we still have this flag file. If we look at the challenge directory, we still have these challenge uh, files. Okay, the other thing that's important to note though is that we have a home directory. So our home hacker directory is persistent. All of the files within this directory across challenge reboots, across going to different challenges, etc., will always stay the same. Uh, we can modify, create files, update files within this directory, and it will be persistent across all of our progression throughout the Pwn College and several dojos. So what does this look like? So for example, if I'm to create the, uh, let's say echo hello into the home hacker world file, now we can see within home hacker, oops, home hacker, we can see that we have this world file now. And if we cat world, we can see it tells us hello. Uh, if we start a challenge again, just to kind of demonstrate this, we will see. So we can either start a new challenge or we can restart the current challenge. In this case, I'm just gonna restart the current challenge. We will see that once it starts after a few seconds, that this file now exists and is still there. So if we look at home hacker, we can see that our world file is still there. If we cat home hacker world, we can see that it still tells us hello. Additionally, just to show that basically all of the files outside of our home hacker directory are not persisted across challenge starts and challenge reboots, we can see that user bin cat is no longer a set UID program. However, of course, when we run the challenge in this case, specific to this particular challenge, we can see that now user bin cat is set UID. Again, you're going to want to watch the lecture videos on this particular module to understand what that means, what this concept of this SUID bit is. But this is the, the, the concept of how all of the challenges work. We're going to be running programs within this challenge directory or analyzing programs within this challenge directory, and our goal is always to get this flag file. Okay, so that is the first two ways that we can access the challenge entirely through our browser. There is a third option, however, for accessing it through SSH. So if we go into our settings page and then click on SSH key, we are able to post a public key here in order to access the challenge uh, through SSH. So if we go to the home page and kind of read through this getting started information, we can see the commands necessary for making that happen. So we're going to jump into our terminal. Now if we paste this command into our terminal and we hit enter, it's going to generate a public and private RSA key pair. So if we take a look in this directory, we will see we have a key and we have a key.pub. So what we're going to do is we're going to cat out the key.pub in order to get its contents. We're going to go ahead and copy it. And then we're going to jump back into the settings, into SSH key, and we're going to paste this in here. Upon doing so, now the system knows about our SSH public key, and we're able to access the challenge over SSH. So again, if we jump back to the getting started, we copy this SSH command, and we paste this into our terminal. We can see that it's going to SSH us straight into the same challenge instance and we have this world file that we were talking about before. We have our flag and we have our challenge. So these are the three ways that you can access the challenge. The first two do not require anything more than a browser and the third uh, in some cases might be more convenient if you prefer accessing challenges over SSH. All three are equally valid. The first two do not require anything more than a browser but maybe you want to SSH. Okay, so those are the three ways that you can access the challenges and that is kind of the basic format of get the flag, submit the flag, go to the next challenge. That's the, the routine of kind of going through these modules uh, and with the challenges within those modules. Additionally, as we said, and we're stressing this because it's absolutely critical, uh, you're going to want to also watch these lecture videos in order to understand the concepts 
present within the module. So these, these videos will explain the concepts uh, that you will then explore within the challenges. Okay, so there's a few other things to know about the Pwn College and Dojo platform. Uh, all of these lectures are available on YouTube. So if I click on this, and we can see that we have this YouTube channel that is where we host all of our videos as well as office hours, live office hours, um, recorded, answered, etc. Uh, we broadcast live on Twitch, so that's where we can take questions from the public as well as students, uh, answer those questions about modules in an interactive way. You can also join our Discord and ask questions here. There's plenty of people that have solved the challenges you're going to be working on. You can ask them for help. Um, and then additionally, all of the infrastructure is available on GitHub. So this Dojo repository is everything that you see here. It's all, it's hosting all of the infrastructure necessary for this to work, if you're interested in that. Okay, uh, that kind of wraps up how you can utilize Pwn College. Um, if you, actually one other quick thing, is within the settings, if you want to, as we showed before, the SSH key can be kind of linked in this way. You can also link your Discord here to connect your Discord account. If you join the Discord, you can link it through here. Okay, now that wraps up everything that we want to demonstrate within using Pwn College, and I hope you find a lot of success in capturing those flags.